That's a plane. Be very good. Right back. Hi, Michael. How you doing? Michael is mute. Are you able to talk at all, Michael? Dun, 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 dun. Hey, Michael, could you let, let me know via chat if you can't talk? I'd just like to know I'm, I'm talking to somebody. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, good morning, Michael. <laughs> We'll have to run the show without audience feedback, huh? Okay. I believe this is the week we start with debits and credits. Debits and credits. Okay. Um, do you know how to unmute? You just hit the, you hit the button on the uh, upper right of your uh, screen. Oh, pardon me. Okay. Having said that, we'll go, we'll roll ahead here. It looks like we're not going to get anybody else this morning. So, okay. That's 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 very strange. Very strange. Okay, you can hear me, which is the, the most important thing, huh? Okay. Chapter three, this is, I'm going to say the most important chapter in the book, because in this chapter, we're going to introduce the world of debits and credits. It's part of the language of accounting, which is the language of business. In chapter two, we ran through a variety of transactions and we used words like higher or lower, increase, decrease, up, down. Somebody invested money in their business. We know cash went up, and so did the equity of the business. We paid a bill that was uh, outstanding. We know that our cash went down, and so did the accounts payable. We no longer owe that debt. In this chapter here, we're going to be using the words debit and credit. And these rules, we're just going to have to get past. And here we go. A T account. A T account. A T, a T account is really um, a piece of scrap paper, really. Um, you, you could be working in accounting for 100 years. And you're working on a problem, and inevitably somebody will start drawing a couple, draw a couple of T accounts. The the important thing here, uh, Michael, is that the T account mimics your general ledger. Right. It mimics the general ledger, and the T your general ledger, each account has a debit side and a credit side, and the only thing. Debit and credit means is left and right. Right. Debits on the left, credits on the right. Okay. So okay. that is our first 
understanding. Debits on the left, credits on the right. Are so, you able to hear me at this point? Hey, Michael, welcome. Good morning, pal. <laughs> Good morning. Sorry. All right. All right. You've been through the first two chapters, right? Yes, I've been through this chapter. I've read through this chapter as well. Okay, okay, good, good. That's excellent. All right, we'll continue here. Okay. Debits on the left, credits on the right. right. And I'm going to tell my, the stupid joke I always tell. Nobody laughs at it. <laughs> but there was a guy who worked in accounting for 50 years. Uh -huh. and, when he re and when he came to work, he would open up his desk drawer with a key, and he had a little post-it note about this big. And he would look at it and nod. When he retired, people were curious what was on the note. You know what it said, Michael? Debits on the left, credits on the right. <laughs> Hopefully, it doesn't take you 50 years to figure that out. Okay? Yes, or a key for that matter. <laughs> there you go. The T account, debit, credit, DRCR. Credits. Every account in your chart of accounts is going to have a separate Let's call it for now a T account, a separate account or folder, if you will, in your general ledger. Cash. Cash is an account. Accounts receivable, accounts payable, um, inventory, perhaps. Okay. Mm -hmm. Rent expense. Whatever, whatever the company wants to keep track of, they set it up in their chart of accounts. Okay. Cash always comes first. Okay. Cash. Every T account has an increase and decrease side. Now, here's the, here's where you're going to go through a little pain at first until you memorize these few rules. Okay. Some accounts increase on the debit side, and others increase on the credit side. And there's, there's really only four things that you have to remember, but it can be a little daunting when you're first working with these things. Yes. The debit side's on the left, credit's on the right. We know that. So we have a, a T account or a general ledger. Here, look at this, huh? Here is your general ledger cash. Your auditors came in and they said, how much cash do you have now at the end of the month? And you tell them, well, we'll figure it out here in a second. Well, we're going to do... Ah, Got happy fingers. Cash. Debits increase cash. What we're going to do is we're going to add the debits, add the credits, and the difference, which in this case, I guess, is what, $370, will yes. be the balance. So well, footing, so it's called footing. Footing is no big deal. You're just adding the debit and credit sides down and the high man wins. The higher number is where the balance goes. Right. We find the balance by taking the difference between the two footings. Not too tough. We had 3,500 when we added debits, 3,130 with the credits, leaves a balance of 370. Okay. I don't think that's going to prove uh, a problem to understand. But as you, as you go further into this, you you might come up with a credit balance in cash, mm -hmm. and that's impossible. Right. It's impossible. <laughs> so if you have a credit balance in cash, it means something has not been recorded or something was recorded incorrectly, mm -hmm. something like that. And you just, okay. need to, you just need to find the solution. Cash. Describe the effects of the debits and credits on the specific types. Here we go, everybody. Ready? The debit in account means you put it on the left, the credit, you put it on the right. Debit could be an increase or a decrease. Credit could be an increase or a decrease. Here we start. Rule number one, assets. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. Mm -hmm. Assets have what's called a normal debit balance. Mm -hmm. In other words, Assets are increased with a debit. See that? Yes. Assets increase with a debit. So when we're talking in the office, someone said, uh, did you write that, that entry? I don't see the debit to cash. Debit. Assets increase with a debit. Rule number one. 
Rule number two, liabilities. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. If assets have a normal debit balance, liabilities and equity are going to have a normal credit balance. Liabilities go up with a credit. You buy something on account, you're going to pay this guy in a month or so. You are going to debit machinery or whatever you bought and credit the liability to increase it. Again, I'm going to say it again. Assets equal liabilities plus equity or capital. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Capital as well would have a normal credit balance. That's an accounting term. Normal balance. Okay. Normal balance of a credit capital or equity or net worth or stockholders equity, whatever it might be called, increases with a credit. So that's that's three of five. I said four. It's really five rules we're going to have to worry about long right. term. <laughs> and now you have sales, revenues, revenues and expenses, which are the opposite of each other. Huh? Revenues increase your equity. Expenses lower them. Anyway, revenues have a normal credit balance. You sold something for cash. You debit cash to increase cash, mm -hmm. and you credit sales or revenues or, or fees, whatever you call your, your revenues. Right. The revenues go up with the credit, which means expenses have to go up with a debit. A uh, debit. Every time you record a revenue, the equity of the company goes up. Every time you record an expense, the equity goes down. So those are the five rules, okay? Mm -hmm. We're going to just look at one more, which I'm not going to emphasize, but we got to know. <laughs> this, this one here deals with drawings. Um, after the first... Uh, six chapters in this book you'll never see this again probably for the rest of your life but, <laughs> but let's really <laughs> unless you go to a small business like my uh my, my nephew and let me explain it first drawing okay. <clears throat> it's important to keep the owner's personal financial affairs separate from the company mm -hmm. so we have something called drawing and drawing is a um I want to say this clearly. Drawing reduces equity. It's a situation like this, Michael. You're sitting at your, your, your desk, or you're walking around, you're working, your boss grabs you and says, Michael, I need a check for $1,000 right now. So he can do that. He's the sole proprietor, the owner. And you right. say, yeah, sure, boss. And as you're walking with him to your desk, you say, well, what's the money for, boss? You need to know that to record it properly. And he right. said, I'm taking my wife and I on a trip to Las Vegas this weekend. Mm -hmm. Well, as soon as you hear that, you know it's not a company expense. Right. It's a personal item. So what happened there was that owner reduced the capital or equity of his business by that $1,000. Mm -hmm. And we reported it with a debit to drawing. Okay. Capital has a normal credit balance. Mm -hmm. Drawing has a normal debit balance, even though it's part of the equity. Okay. So the owner takes money out. We're going to credit cash because the money's gone, and we're going to re reduce the net worth of the, build of the business. Don't confuse yourself by thinking that withdrawals like this are an expense. They're not a, an expense. They're a reduction in equity. Okay. And again, you, you're not going to see that. Uh, there, there aren't too many businesses of any sign. Um, my, my, uh, my dear late departed brother-in-law back uh -huh. in Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> Italian guy, right out of the Sopranos. This guy. Anyway, he ran a, a couple gas stations. He had a pizzeria. And I uh -huh. used to kid him. I'd say, hey, Artie, how much do you get paid in that? You know, it's a family business. Yeah. And he said, well, he said, at the end of the week, we just scoop up everything in the cash register and leave a little bit behind 
<laughs> and we split it up. Nice. So they were drawing this money out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I said, all right, you realize you're never going to be able to borrow money, get people to invest it. And he said, we don't care. We know what we're doing. So anyway, that that's more than enough about drawing. <laughs> Here is the famous umbrella. Assets. Normal balance, meaning goes up with a debit. Mm -hmm. Liabilities go up with a credit. Equity goes up with a credit, right? Mm -hmm. Notice the components of the equity. What affects equity on a daily basis, we'll say. What affects equity is every time you have a sale, revenue, right. equity goes up. When you have an expense, when you increase an expense with a debit, the equity goes down. And if the owner takes money out, reduces equity. Okay. Those are all the rules about debits and credits. <laughs> Let's keep going. Now, here is a good grid. And I, and I suggest to students, when you're starting with the world of debits and credits, maybe print this out. Yeah. Or take a picture of it. Have it in front of you when you're starting your homework. Yeah. I did a three by five card. Yeah. What's that? I did a three by five card. There you go. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. You don't have to worry. You don't have to memorize one column, two column, three column. Mm -hmm. You just have to memorize one of them. Right. You know, memorize the increase column if you want, or the normal balance. Assets. Go up with a debit, liabilities, capital. I can't say enough. Go up with a credit. Revenue goes up with a credit, and then the debits, expense, and drawing. If you have one column memorized, <laughs> then you know the other two columns automatically. Right. The increase side is the normal balance. So these two columns are the same. Right. And if you know the increase side, you absolutely know the decrease side. Be the opposite. Okay, let me take a snort of my morning whiskey here. Hold on. Sounds good. Well, that's good booze. Here we go. Transactions. And now they get into a lot of verbiage here. Transactions occur. What's a, what's a transaction? Any event that affects the financial condition of the company. It can be a big major thing, like you had a stock issue and you brought in millions of dollars. It could be, the analysis could be as simple as the electric bill is in the mail now. We, we opened up the mail, there's the electric bill. That's an expense. That's a transaction that must be recorded. You got to debit that expense, electricity expense, whatever. And credit accounts payable because you're going to pay it later. So they're saying, what happened? Do we know what accounts are going to be hit? Classify them in your mind, assets, liabilities, and how is the equation affected? The accounting equation can never go out of balance. You're never going to have to worry about that. Right. In the old days, when I when we did this in pencil, it was always going out of balance, and then you always had a fiasco <laughs> fixing fixing the damn thing. Anyhow, am, am I correct was, in assuming that I'll never see an actual book? Right, everything now is going to be computerized. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What, what what I'm getting at is uh, any system today, I'm sure, will not allow you to put in an out of balance uh, entry. Right. right. You know, if you tell the computer to, to debit cash and then hit enter, it's not going to just debit cash. Whereas right. a man with a pencil could do that in the old day, you know? Right, right, right. It was hell. Okay. The owner invested 5000 in the business. Okay. That's a transaction. We had a business that didn't exist. Now we have a business where cash goes up by 5000 and the capital goes up by 5,000. We are going to say we debit cash and credit Mitchell Williams capital for $5,000. And say hello to our accounting equation. Cash assets 5,000 equals equity. Let's continue. 
this guy went out and he bought a motor scooter and he paid I can't read this. I gotta move this thing oh. over here. He paid cash. I couldn't tell if it was on a counter. Oh. Okay. He he paid cash for some equipment. That's pretty easy to understand. You know, they're bringing the equipment in the building right now. We're looking at it. So we have, as these are two assets. One asset goes up, one asset goes down. Just an exchange of assets. We're going to debit delivery equipment and credit cash. And if you look, we still have the 5000 in assets, but the cash has dwindled down to three. And now we have some equipment. We have these motor scooters to deliver pizza. Now we bought one on account. And if you looked at any of my videos, you know that I'm always telling people when you see the words on account, it means on account and nobody had money. It means that cash is not part of the transaction on account. It's either going to be accounts receivable meaning we are going to receive this money in the future or accounts payable, whether we owe money. So he bought an asset on account. Well, we know the delivery equipment went up and so did accounts payable. Accounts payable is the number that represents how much all of your, how much you owe to all of your vendors and suppliers, okay? So we know delivery equipment is an asset. The other guy's a liability, accounts payable. We're going to debit delivery equipment to increase it and credit accounts payable to increase accounts payable. Here's the impact on the equation. We received another $1,800 piece of equipment. We debit equipment, the asset. We credit accounts payable. Assets have now gone up 6,800, but we now have a debt. We now have a liability. We have a payable money we owe next month probably. And we still have the 5,000 in equity. We're in balance. Wow, we're making a payment on it already, huh? Well, we just bought the $600. There's our 1,800 in debt. Now we're paying one third of it. So we cut a check for $600 and we sent it out to this guy in, in payment. Cash is affected and so is accounts payable. Cash is going to go down and so is accounts payable. We're going to debit accounts payable to reduce it. And credit cash, $600 as well, to reduce cash. So liabilities, the debit reduces. Liabilities go up with the credit. Now we're making a payment to reduce it. It goes down to $1,200. Cash went down to $600. And we no longer have $6,800 in uh, assets. We have $6,200. Minus the liability of twelve hundred, gives us the five thousand. We're in balance. Delivery revenues earned in cash. Okay, here's our first uh, income statement type transaction. <clears throat> Mitch made deliveries and he received twenty one hundred from clients. That's great. He catered a big party at UCSB or something. <laughs> Hundreds of people, whatever. He walked in, delivered the food, and somebody handed him a check for $2,100. Well, we know cash went up $2,100. Debit cash, fees, that's what he calls his sales. Sales have a normal credit balance. Fees go up with a credit. Debit cash, right here, debit cash $2,100. Credit fees, twenty one hundred. Now, what happened to his capital, Michael? It was five thousand, right? Mm -hmm. If the month, I'm sorry, five thousand. 
if the month ended today, it would be up to 7,100. Revenues increase equity, expenses decrease it. Uh oh, we have expenses to pay. He paid for the rent. <laughs> when you see the word paid, you know it's cash, okay? Students right. actually get a little confused at that at first. Cash. Well, cash is obviously going to go down, right? We paid it, and now we're recording an expense. So that expense increased by $1,000. We're going to debit rent expense and credit cash. Debit rent expense, which has the effect of reducing the equity. We started out with 5000 in equity. We had sales of 2100 That brought the balance to 7100 And an increase in rent expense decreases the equity. And here is the payment we made, 1000 Okay. Paid the rent. Got the pesky phone bill. $100 cash, phone expense. We debit phone expense. We credit cash. Credit cash. That's not too tough. If the, if the month ended at this point, Michael, mm -hmm. this company would have a profit of $1,000. Sales were $2,100, and they had $1,100 in expenses. Okay, let's continue. He delivered revenues earned on account. On account means no cash. On account, nobody had money. So he delivered $2,400 worth of stuff to City College. They had a big meeting with the trustees or something, and they had a little dinner. He made deliveries on account. We know it's going to be accounts receivable or accounts payable. This is clearly accounts receivable because we are going to get paid by our customer later. And sales go up, or in this case, they call them delivery fees. We're going to debit accounts receivable, credit delivery fees. We trust these people are going to pay us. We introduced a new, excuse me, a new asset account. Accounts receivable. Accounts receivable. We are going to debit accounts receivable and credit the revenues called delivery fees, 2400 So this guy's making some money, huh? Seems to be. He bought some supplies. I'm sorry. I just want to see something here real quick. Okay. He bought supplies, $80. These supplies are going to last for a couple of months. The supplies are going to be recorded as an asset at the time of purchase. When you buy insurance, when you buy an insurance policy or you buy supplies, they are assets at the time of purchase. They get turned into an expense when you use them. So for now, supplies are an asset. And that asset is called, in this case, we call them supplies. Really should be called prepaid supplies. I don't know why they don't put that prepaid in front. But anyway, it's a supply that went up and cash went down. Debit supplies to increase it. Credit cash to reduce the cash. They have a new asset, $80, $80. We're in balance, huh? Now, we received $1,900 from some customers. Remember, our customers now owe us $2,400? Now this guy made a quick payment. He paid us in one slide. <laughs> slide one, he, he owed us. Next slide, he paid us. We received $1,900 in cash for customers Earlier in the month, we received the cash, but this doesn't hit revenue right. because the revenue was recorded when it was earned. 
right? That's the most important principle in the world of what we're calling accrual accounting. Revenues are recorded when they take place, not necessarily when the payment is made. Same thing with expenses. Okay. Hey, so we received cash. We're going to debit cash and credit accounts receivable. It's another exchange of assets. Our favorite asset cash went up by 1900 And now this guy doesn't owe us 2400 anymore. With that credit for 1900 he owes us $5. Okay? $500. Okay, here's our first compound entry. Compound. And everybody remember that. Compound entry. A compound entry is simply any any entry that has more than one debit or more than one credit. You can have a hundred debits and just one credit, or a hundred credits and just one debit. Compound. The reason I, I I say that they don't go over it in the book. I don't think at all. And it and it excuse me. And it popped up on the test in my other yeah. class a couple of months ago. Yeah. Okay. He bought a third motor scooter for a thousand dollars. Okay, divide and conquer. He bought a motor scooter for a thousand bucks. That's an asset that's going to go up with a debit for a thousand dollars. But he had to make a down payment. He had to make a down payment of three and finance the rest. So cash goes down by three hundred. And accounts payable goes up by 700. Here's our asset. He bought it for $1,000. We debit the asset to increase it. He had to pay 300. We credit that asset to reduce the balance. And we credit accounts payable to increase the balance. Before we made the, I'm sorry. Before we made this purchase, we owed, oh God, this thing is sensitive. We owed $1,200 and now we owe $1,900. He bought an insurance policy, an insurance policy. And now they are using the word prepaid in front, okay? It's, it's called a prepaid expense. Okay. It's an asset at the time you buy it. He bought an insurance policy for seven hundred dollars. He let's we're just gonna make this up. He bought this this policy in December to cover the first seven, ten months, whatever it is, of the next year. Until that policy goes into effect and he's got the benefit of coverage, it's an asset. Right now in your class here, insurance is an asset. He paid seven hundred. We're going to increase the insurance, prepaid insurance, which is an asset with a debit, and we're going to credit cash to reduce it. He's building all of these assets. Huh? It looks like a real business. Insurance went up, cash went down with the credit. Went down with it, man. He had to pay the wages sixteen hundred and fifty dollars, huh? Salaries and wages. Wages are an expense. Cash is an asset. We have to give up that asset in order to pay the delivery drivers. We debit wage expense for sixteen fifty to increase the expenses, and we credit cash for sixteen fifty to reduce it. Man, that's our biggest expense, huh? We mm -hmm. debit wages. What does that do to equity? It reduces the equity. We debit wage expense and we credit cash. Here's another compound entry on the other side. We have now made another sale. We made a sale of food. We, we delivered it all over the all over City College, all over UCSB, pizza here, pizza there. We had sales of 
$3,500. So sales are going to increase huh, by 3500 And we're going to do that with a credit. $900 in cash we received. Some of our customers, some of our customers handed over cash, $900. So cash is going to go up $900. The balance of $2,600 is going to go into accounts receivable. As soon as you see the words on account, $2,600 on account, you know nobody had $600. So we're going to get paid later. So this is this is a lovely transaction. What a big sale! Wow, a thirty five hundred dollars sale, which we call delivery fees, for which we received nine hundred in cash. We debit cash. We debit accounts receivable to increase. Not too bad. Now here's the pesky withdrawal, which you do need to know for the first test or two. You need to know it. Most most businesses in the United States by far are small sole proprietorships. There's 10 times more of those than big companies and partnerships. And here's where you might run into this. So Mitch did all this work all month and he withdrew $3,000 from the business to buy textbooks. And uh, he's apparently a student at the uh, city college. The cash went down obviously obviously we credit cash and we learned that drawings are part of equity but they reduce equity drawing is the opposite of an expense think of it that way and it's the opposite of a revenue i'm sorry it has the same impact as an expense a revenue your equity grows, drawing, you're reducing it. So this company prior to this transaction had a net worth of uh, $13,000. Five plus the eight is 13, minus your, whatever the number is. And now it's been reduced by 3,000. We debit drawing, follow that arrow straight up. That reduces equity. And we credited cash to reduce cash. Okay. What do you think, Michael? Do you feel pretty comfortable learning this? I do so far, yeah. Yeah. You might, uh, you know, 99% of the students get a little mixed up as you first get going here. Yes. Be because there's nothing intuitive about it. You do really have to memorize those five rules. Yeah. You know, asset, liability, um, equity, revenue, expense. Excuse me. Right. Right now, accounts payable occasionally trips trips me up because for some reason that doesn't click in my head. But Say that again. For some reason, when I when I'm working with accounts payable, it yeah. seems me it seems should be opposite, but I'm I'm working through that. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, accounts. Uh, we bought something. So you bought something from me. Yeah. On account. Yeah. You that's accounts. Uh, that's accounts receivable to me. Right. It's accounts payable to you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The yep. kind of the, the, the opposite, huh? Right. Okay. Now we ended the month and we have our balances. We can now prepare the financial statements. We're going to start with a trial balance. And I think you're seeing a trial balance for the first time in this chapter. Right. Explain the purpose and the, Relation linkage with the statements. Some of the debits must equal the sum of the credits. Counting equation must remain in balance. The trial balance is a list of everything in your chart of accounts, starting with cash. It goes in the order of cash, liabilities, equity, revenue, expense. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. You're going to list all the accounts and their month-end balances, whether it's debit or credit. The trial balance serves two purposes. It proves that the accounting equation is in balance. And like I said, when this was done 
uh, I mean, I worked for a fairly large division of a big company. It was like $30 million back then. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess that would be like uh, $200 million today. You know, a lot of transactions. And you'd yeah. run that trial balance at the end of the month. And then when you added it up, you just prayed that it that it equaled. Okay. <laughs> once yeah. once we're beyond that issue, okay. now we have a tool to prepare our income statement, equity statement, and balance sheet. The sequence of the trial balance is super important, and you're going to see that pretty soon. It goes in order: assets, liabilities, equity, revenues, expenses. Hey, here's our first look at a trial balance. A trial balance is just a piece of scrap paper, really. No investor, no lender, no employee other than the accounting department is going to say, where's the trial balance? Nobody uses the trial balance except to prepare the statements. You can throw it away, maybe, even at the end of the month. Trial balance. So take a look. Here is the sequence, assets, liabilities, equity, and then revenues and expenses. Cash, receivables, support. Well, all the assets have a normal debit balance. Payables and equity have a credit balance. Drawings, which reduces equity. Debit, and here's a credit for your sales and some expenses we incurred. Trial balance. And they're giving us a color presentation. Right. Assets, assets, liabilities, equity, drawing, they all have their own colors, okay? Now, here we go. Here we go. Take a look at the trial balance. Mm -hmm. We remember the sequence. Mm -hmm. You see where it says drawing, Michael? Yes. You could draw a horizontal line right there below that 3,000. Okay. A thick horizontal line, if you want. You don't have to. The reason I'm telling you to do it mm -hmm. is why. Can you, can you make a guess why I'm asking you to do that? No, not specifically with drawing. Not a, not a fair question at this point, really. The reason you do that, Michael, everything that comes after drawing is your income statement. Uh, okay. Here's your income statement: uh, the eight thousand minus these people. So we had eight thousand in sales, mm -hmm. and we had what? Uh, what's that? Eleven hundred? Uh, I don't know. Thirty-seven fifty in expenses. By drawing that line, you're setting yourself up to make life a lot easier. Okay. Uh, okay. Some of the other teachers, professors, whatever, mm -hmm. they sometimes don't give you the trial balance in the exact order oh, and, really? you have to re and you have to reshuffle they, wow. they, they they do it they you know they they, they think it really makes you think you, you're never going to see it that way in the real world so we I, I i don't do that in my class yeah okay you you can read the numbers here right where it says yes. income statement yeah okay what do we say our income statement was everything below drawing eight Income statement, and this is important now. The heading is, is important. You have the name of the company and the, the name of the statement. You must say something like this for the income statement. You must say for the month ended, June 30th in this case, or for the month of, okay. or you can even get away with April 2024. Hmm. And that's okay. important. That's important. And you'll see why when we go ahead. Okay. Now you set your income statement up. You can pretty much do it any way you want. You want to you want it to have some uh, hold on here. Oh boy. No worries. I I, I hit home, I think. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, there we go. Just looking at something here real quick. No worries.
Do you ever watch The Big Bang Theory when it was on television? No, it's a it's a little uh it's a I'm older. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very old. I used to watch it. I thought it was a funny show. The gotcha. one character, the one character has Asperger's. Uh -huh. where it, it makes him do things compulsively. I, I have to do that little trick there. Uh, okay. okay. So look at our income statement, huh? Uh -huh. We have sales, 8,000. We set that up on the right. And then earlier column, we have expenses, colon, list your expenses. Total your expenses up. Net income, 5,250. Holy cow. So he started a business with $8,000. I'm sorry. He started a business with $5,000. And he increased the equity by $5,250 just on the income. Yes. It's pretty good, huh? So if, you do, if you're do, doing a real quick analysis, if you took $5,250 and divided it as a percentage, you divide it by $8,000, that's almost 70%. Mm -hmm. If he took his five thousand dollars to the bank and put it in the bank for the summer, he'd be lucky to get fifty dollars at the end of the summer. Right. Okay, so he made money. So that's the first statement you have to know how to prepare: the income statement, sales minus expenses equal. And you just want to present it in a way where the numbers aren't all jumbled up in one column. We have a lot of freedom there. Okay. Okay. Now, we have to do the income statement first. Mm -hmm. That's that's imp it's impossible to do it otherwise. We have to do the income statement first, then the equity statement, then the balance sheet. So let's okay. continue. Now, he had a profit of fifty two fifty. That profit increased. His beginning equity. His beginning equity was the five thousand he put into the business, and now he has income, which we're pulling from here, of fifty two fifty. But he took money out for personal use, that reduces his equity, and leaves us with a new capital balance of seventy two fifty. We had a beginning balance of 5000 that he put in. And at the end, the balance is 7250 Notice the header again. Company name, statement name, for the month ended, for the month of, or just month of, or just April 2024, or whatever, June, I guess, in this case here. Okay. To go with the equity statement, and this is the one where students kind of stumble a little bit, the equity statement. You know the expression, bide your time? Got to bide our, B-I-D-E. Yeah. It's the beginning balance uh -huh. plus income. Got it. Minus drawing ending. Some yeah. students like those acronyms. I happen to like them myself. Yeah. Um, where, where I learned to love them uh -huh. was when I prepared for the CPA exam. Yeah, uh, my, my God, that's almost, uh, wow, it's over 40 years ago okay. when I took the CPA exam um, in the, in the uh, review course. There were tons of mnemonics that they recommended, and I got into the habit of making them up. Yeah. So you buy the time. Okay, now we did the income statement first. We had no choice. We had to do the equity statement second to come up with the new capital number. What was the capital on our trial balance? It was $5,000, right? Right. Now it's gone from five to 7250. Now we can prepare the balance sheet. The balance sheet is a representation of the accounting equation. Our assets must equal our liabilities plus equity. In this case, they do. Now, where did we get these numbers? Where did we get the 470 and where did we get that 1900? Well, we know where we got it. 
right from the trial balance. All we had to do was copy, copy everything down to equity. So, so essentially the trial balance is a representation of the financial statements kind of in reverse, right? Yeah. So you start with the bottom, work through the middle, and then... Up yeah. The yeah, if you want to look at it that way, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Since you're always going to get it in the proper order, mm -hmm. you know everything you have to draw, or, or, or if you want to do it this way, everything starting with your first revenue account is your income statement. Right. Okay. Okay. So we copied over the 470 and the 3100, the 1900. That was a copy job, copy. The equity is no longer 5,000. The equity is 7250 from here. Okay. And now we're in balance. Mm -hmm. Now, and, th and this is important here when we talk about for a moment. Mm. Look at your header now on the balance sheet. Company, yes. ah, try to keep my hands off it. Uh, balance sheet, you have the company name, balance sheet. Notice what it says there. Notice that it does not say for the month ended. Right. It has a specific date. Yeah. The reason for that is the balance sheet is not an accumulation of numbers that can only go up. Right. Like on the income side. The balance sheet is a snapshot. It's a photograph of how much cash you had at the end of the month, how much your customers owed you, what you had in other assets, and how much you owed. It is a point in time. Right. We understand that? Yes. It's a point in time. The income statement is not a, is not a snapshot. It's a, it's a video. It's a movie. Same thing with the equity statement. At the beginning of the month, what you're going to learn, Michael, I think in the next chapter, what you're going to learn is you're you're going to start every month off and the balance of revenue and expenses is going to be zero because at the end of every month, we take those revenues and expenses and we move them into equity. So in, in, income statement, and uh, equity statement, they're like a movie. Scene one, you sell something, you sell more, you sell, and, and you're just layering scene on scene. Revenues can only go up, they can't go down. Expenses can only go up, they can't go down until we get into some exceptions. Right. Okay. So, that, so that's important. Um, and they and they love to nail you on that on the test. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hey. That concludes today's presentation. Ah, very nice. Do, do anybody out there, anybody, anybody in the class today have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel pretty confident on the subject matter. So good, good. So, it sounds like you are. And yeah. from the questions you were asking, um, it, it looks like, looks like you're going that way. Yeah. So, um, if there's no no other questions, we'll uh, and I. Can can I borrow your time or uh for yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you got? I you're actually so I'm in the process of uh re sort of retooling my career. Uh -huh. And I'm interested in becoming a bookkeeper and an accountant. Uh yeah, go for it. Uh you're exactly the person I want to talk to because <laughs> you have a lot of experience and you've worked in the nonprofit wor world, which is something I'm interested in. Yeah. Is there a time I could sit down with you and uh, ask you a few questions? Yeah, yeah, but we can do that, or we can zoom together. I mean, I'm on I'm on yeah. campus um, Tuesday and Thursday. Okay, I, I just have one class at um, three fifteen, but okay. I'm always there a couple hours. So if you want to pop in on a Tuesday or a Thursday, um, just, I'll just be there. Your your lecture at three fifteen. Yeah, yeah, but I, I usually have to get there at least two hours beforehand to print out the stuff I need that day. Uh -huh. uh, I'm not like other people where you do it in advance. You know, don't have to <laughs> Fair enough. So, yeah, we can talk.
I mean, I, I had a student um, whose name escapes me a couple of years ago. He uh, was a chef. Uh huh. And, you know, that was his career path. And he got a little tired of it. And long term, he thought it might be too grueling physically. So, yeah. so, so he looked into accounting as a possibility. Yeah. And he took this course here, the starting course, 110. And he did okay. He did good. Mm hmm. And he said to me, can I go out and get a job in accounting now? And I kind of chuckled. I said, well, you, you could you could try. Yeah. I said, you have learned a couple of things that are helpful. Right. Mostly bank reconciliations, which come at the end of this uh, course. Okay. Bank reconciliation, in my opinion, is probably the most important document that a business prepares. Gotcha. And my experience in the workforce is mm -hmm. that a lot of people are intimidated by them okay. and don't even do them. Wow. And if you don't do them, somebody could steal all your money. You may not know it. For, uh, anyway. So I said, maybe you can walk into somebody's office and just say, hey, I'm Michael. I'm a student here in, uh, at City College. I wonder if you have any openings in your accounting department. Well, you know what happened to him? He got hired on a part time basis to yeah. see if he could help out with a backlog of bank reconciliations. Huh. And he ended up getting a, getting an offer there. Nice. So he, so I don't know what his title is. He's probably just a clerk, right, at this right. point. Right. But the company thought enough of the guy to put him on full time. Yeah. that's Now that's kind of the story I'm hoping for. So I, yeah. I'm going to do the AAS here, and I should be able to finish by this December. And then... I would going to go out on the market as, as bookkeeper, you know, clerk kind of yeah. level yeah. and then do that while I finish the accounting degree. Yeah. Get the bookkeeper certificate then, you you know, you know, that's available, right? Yeah. 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 That's, that's a good start there. Okay. Um, I will not be on campus anymore after the semester. I'm moving yeah. back. To I, you were telling us last time. So yeah, I definitely want to uh, chat with you and, uh, and, uh, have you help me before you're yeah. no longer available to us? Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to have to fly to Kutztown, Pennsylvania, if you know what that is. <laughs> I'm sure it's lovely there, but uh, right across the street is also helpful, too. So, yeah. yeah. OK, well, I'll let you go then, Michael. Good to have you Thank here. Thank you so much. See you later, man. Have a good day. Bye bye.